Hello everyone, welcome to day two, section 10.4, dealing with secants and tangents. I'm Miss Lindsay. Today we're gonna focus on what we call common tangents, but we're first gonna look at a definition of tangent circles. Tangent circles intersect each other at exactly one point, and they can be either external or internally tangent. An example of an external tangent circles would be over here on our right. So let me draw a line through there, through circle P and Q, and they'll have the same point of tangency T. On the left-hand side, this is an example of internally tangent. So again, let me just draw a line here. Point of tangency is T through circle P and Q. And please notice here that line PQ, this is what we call the line of the centers. So if I go to connect those over here in our right hand diagram, it goes through obviously the point of tangency on both of those. If I extend that, and would form a right angle with both of those. Now let's discuss common tangent. Uh, common tangent intersects two or more circles, and again it could be external or it can be internal. The main difference here is a common internal tangent does go through the line of the centers, where an external tangent does not go through the line of centers. So again, let's draw an example of that. We'll have our same circles P and Q. In the bottom here, I have Again, I missed that just a little bit. It can be a little bit difficult to draw some of these. But here I would have AB. Not only is it a common tangent, but it is our common external tangent. Switching colors. Now if I draw, again, this can be a little bit difficult to kind of draw this exactly, but it is going to hit at one point on both of those circles. We'll call that XY. So again, line XY it is not only common, but it's a common internal tangent because it will cut through the line of the center's PQ. Next, we're going to actually go on and look at, this is written down on page 462 in your book. There's a common procedure that we use to solve problems dealing with common internal and external tangents. I also have that written down here as well. Might be a good idea to pause and write this down or flip to your textbook to page 462. There are four main rules here. Uh, the first one, we are going to draw the line of centers. And the second one is we're gonna draw in the radii to the points of tangency forming our right angles. The third step is the most crucial step. Through the line of centers of the small, I'm sorry, through the center of the smaller circle, through the center of the smaller circle, draw a line parallel to the common tangent. This will do two things for us. It will form a rectangle and a right triangle, and then we'll be able to use Pythagorean theorem and properties of that rectangle to help us solve the problem. So again, draw your line of centers, draw your radii to your points of tangency, through the center of the smaller circle, draw a line parallel to the common tangent. So let's follow these procedures as we go through our first example. First, draw your line of centers. I am missing one thing in this example. I'd like to write this down. Please note that circle Q and circle P are tangent. So that is one part that is missing in that example, so please add that in there. Okay, so let's go back to our steps. We drew in the line of centers. The second step is drawing your radii to the points of tangency. That happens to already be done for us. The third step, the crucial step, from the center of the smallest circle, in our case here, P. So we're gonna start at that center, P, and we're gonna draw a line parallel to our common tangent, AB. I'm just gonna form a new point over there on line um, segment AQ called M. So as you can see, now we have A, B, P, M is a rectangle. We would have, we're trying to actually find AB, so we'll call that X. 
We know opposite sides are congruent, so that would be the same as MP. And again, we also know BP, BP is 8, so again, the opposite side, AM, would be 8. However, we know the radius there is 18, therefore that would give us QM is 10. So we have a rectangle in the top, and then the bottom portion here, MQP, we have a right triangle. Important to note here where the right angle is. Remember we have, on our rectangle, we have right angles at all four corners. Therefore, at angle QMP, we have a right angle. So if I just draw that diagram below, Q, that's a 10, right angle at M, MP is X. Now we have our right triangle. And again, because the circles are tangent, we know we have this radius of the one circle on the left is 18, radius of circle P is 8. That will give us the distance of the centers between Q and P is going to be 26. Now we can actually go ahead and solve. And again, this is going to be a triple. So X would be 24. And P is 24, which is equal to our common external tangent of 24. So as you can notice in this diagram, you want to definitely make sure that you draw your circles large enough. All of your work is going to be done with inside your triangle, sorry, within your circles. So please make sure you draw those large enough so you're not scrunching in your work and getting lost in with all the lines that you're drawing. So make sure you draw those nice and big. We're going to follow these same procedures to do a common internal tangent problem. So again, following our steps here, we want to draw in the line of centers. And second step, the radii to your points of tangency. We can also read the problem here and label a couple different things. Um, we want to find GE, so we could call that X. I'll call that X with the red here. I'm not highlighting that in red. Radius is 5 and circle D, so we'll label that as 5. Radius in three in, of 3 and circle F. And the circles are 10 units apart at the centers. Again, this can be a little bit difficult to draw, so I'll label this at the top. So from F to D is 10 units apart. So we've already done our first two steps, drawing the line of centers drawn in the radii. Now again from the center of the smallest circle, in our case here that is F, we're going to draw a line parallel to our common tangent. So we're going to draw from F parallel to EG. Now we're going to have to extend the radius of circle D, and again I'm just going to call this point down here at the bottom M. So we have a point of reference. So we have EFMG is now going to be our rectangle. So again, we have opposite sides are going to be congruent. So FM would be congruent to our tangent EG. So that would be X. Radius EF3 would be congruent to GM. So I can label that on the other side. Now we have to look for our right triangle. Our right triangle is going to be this larger figure. I'll outline this in black. So we have triangle FDM with our right angle being there at M. If you need to, go ahead and draw that again because you get a lot of things going on in your diagram. So at M is your right angle. M to F is X. F to D, now remember that's our line of centers which we said was 10. DM, we're going to add the radius of 5 and then our side of our rectangle, so we get that to be 8. Now we have a triple. X is going to be 6. So FM is 6, and again that is congruent to our common tangent EG. Again, all of our work is done with inside of our diagram here, so really important to draw those circles large. Please stop and rewind if you need be on any of these examples, okay? Notice how I'm also highlighting. Might not be a bad idea to use a highlighter to help you with some of these problems as well. What I would like you to do with example three, I would like you to do this on your own, and we will go over it in class tomorrow. 
So please take a minute, go through this, follow your rules on page 462 to work through this problem. This is a common external tangent. This concludes day two of section 10.4.